Hello, BookTube. I'm here with a few more new books. Uh, I mentioned on a couple of uh, videos, um, I was expecting uh, 15 books from Amazon. And uh, they, they were ones, like I get, well, I'm sure everybody knows that they'll go to look for something and they'll see a price that's just uh, ridiculously cheap that they, it's dropped on Amazon. And then they may go back either literally a few hours later or the next day and it's gone about up, back up to the uh, full price. Or as soon as you buy it, it bounces back to the full price. Or sometimes it even dropped lower. It, it all depends. But I was looking uh, for uh, something after um, uh, Peg at the History Shelf uh, was um, showing some um, sort of more recent George Orwell uh, books. And I thought, oh, I should take a look because I, I haven't, it's about five or six years now, a good five or six years or more, that I've actually uh, kept up with what was coming out on Orwell, about Orwell. I knew about the one that was the biography of 1984, so I thought, well, I'll take a look at it. And this is the British version. It's much smaller than the uh, than the uh, American version, uh, but it's kind of cool. I like the uh, I like the look of it. It almost reminds me of uh, what is it? Uh, the computer from uh, History's Guide to the Galaxy TV show, Deep Thought. Um, yeah, so I, I popped this up, and it was like two pounds something. So I thought it was very odd. I popped it into my basket. I was just about to hit uh, um, pay. Then I thought, well, what else is there? Like, is there any way? But anyway, after, after about a half an hour, well, actually, I actually wound up paying for this just so I wouldn't lose it, knowing that it can bounce around. Uh, I think it's gone back up to sort of half cover or something like that last time I looked. But anyway, I figured out a way of searching to, to get everything uh, listed um, with with these prices because it wasn't as easy as just going lowest. Uh, I had to fiddle around with doing something, but now I can't get back to it, so I'm not sure uh, what's happened there. But anyway, so I bought this one for two pounds something. Uh, then there was another one I knew that, um, so I specifically looked for it, that was the first thing, uh, was this one here, it's in Oxford, uh, English Rebel. I was actually in Oxford um, the day this was released at the Oxford uh, uh, bookshop, and it was only 20-some pounds, I think, was the cover price. I just, for some, yeah, 25 pounds, I just, I balked at it for some reason and left it. Then it showed up uh, as a remainder for like seven ninety nine, uh, and I didn't get it then, and I was too late. This This was listed there for just over a pound. And they're supposed to be new copies, but you can feel where there was a sticker on here. And there's a little bit of roughness to this. Every one has a little bit of damage, so I'm, I'm convinced that these are sort of uh, returns. People have returned them, or um, like publishers would get, uh, you know, returns. And other booksellers would buy them, but I don't know regarding the Amazon. But I think these are things that people have returned. Um, there's like, yeah, some wear around it. So I wouldn't call this a brand new copy, nor would I this. But another one that I found that I wasn't even uh, looking for, because I, 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 before I even found the, um, 1984 volume, I'd put in sort of, you know, George Orwell, and I was getting this weirdest stuff. Put in George Orwell, I'm getting romances, Harlequin romance type stuff. It wasn't searching, uh, well at all. Um, so I just went through, as I say, once I figured out how to do this, I just went through all the prices. Uh, I went up to, I think, uh, about four pounds or something like that, but I didn't buy anything past sort of, uh, two pounds or, or two pounds something, because it all came to, um, ten, uh, ten pounds, uh, for 15 books. One of them they, was a reprint. Uh, that it's well, it's, it's this these digital reprints that show up all the time, forgotten books or something like that. And I, I was always curious at what they were like. And this there was one that had an interesting title. It was twenty five p. 
So I get, I'm, I'm getting that. I just want to see what the quality is. Because I, I'd heard some people say, oh, the quality is great. And then I remember somebody uh, uh, tweeting uh, um, a book. Well, it must have been about this size. And on the pages, they had like six thumbnails of the original book pages. And they were they looked like the Google books that looked like they'd been photocopied like 50 times over it. Like photocopied, then re-photocopied, then re-photocopied. You couldn't read anything on it. And it was like they, pay, they paid like 80-some pounds for it. So uh, I was curious. And for 25p, I thought that was that was well worth it. But they told me, oh, it's come in damaged. So they didn't. They, they refunded me my 25p. There's still two that I need to get, and they're saying they're delayed, and there are two other Orwell books. But here's another Orwell book that I didn't know existed. Well, it actually just came out in 2020. This was the most expensivest one, I think. This was like two pounds, 70 some pence, 75 pence, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, I'd never heard of it. It's 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 uh, published by Unbound. Uh, it's the making of George Orwell. It's basically uh, a biography of uh, his wife Eileen. Uh, well, and and Orwell. It's quite it's quite big, um, and it looks like it's well documented. Uh, lots of notes. Yeah, it's over 400 pages. Uh, there's uh, yeah, there's there's quotes on the back from D. J. Taylor, who did a biography of of Orwell. Uh, Gordon Bowker, who's done a biography of Orwell, which I've got. Peter Stansky, who's also done uh, stuff on Orwell, uh, biographical material. Um, and yeah, in the Sylvia, it's by Sylvia Topp. Uh, it says, the author of numerous essays, including The Hidden Husbands, and you can't get to Barnhill from here. She has worked in publishing since college, starting a cop as copy editor on medical journals and then moving to freelance editing major literary uh, publishing houses. She was a longtime wife and partner of Tuli uh, Cooperfield, a beat poet who later was a co-founder in 1964 of the F uh, Fugs, a legendary rock and roll band. Um, yeah, she, she started a lot of magazines and well, she lives in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Uh, yeah, so this, and, and it's saying this just came out uh, in 2020, so it's just brand new, and I just can't believe the price of it. But but again, I when I searched sort of George Orwell, I couldn't find it. So anyway, so those like I say, there's two other uh, George Orwell books that I I not heard of that. Well, they said they're delayed, so they may not show up. So I, that's why I figured I'd do this one with the um, uh, eleven. I think I got eleven books. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, 11, 11 books. Um, another one here was, I was surprised to see this. This is uh, a Canadian author. Um, I know hardly anything about her except her name. And it's University of Toronto Press. And this was like 50 or 60p or something like that. It was just a ridiculous price. Uh, Constant Lindsay Skinner, writing on the frontier. And she lived in uh, British Columbia. Uh, late 19th century and early 20th century. Mainly, I was interested because she wrote a, what I gleaned from um, other other sources. Occasionally, I'd see her name. That she wrote a lot of of um, newspaper material uh, and uh, essays and so forth. So I was interested in that. Uh, but you know, it's well documented. It's like that is the um, sort of the documentation period, the like chronology, and so forth. And again, it's it's shop worn in a sense. Like it's it's I don't know if you can see it. It's it's got a rub dutch jacket, and you can see the fingerprint, dirty fingerprints, on it in various places. Um, yeah, this was a massive surprise. This has gone up in price quickly too, and this was even cheaper than the Orwell one. That this was a surprise. I Never even heard of it. Um, well, I know who it is, Edmund Curl. Uh, it's a biography, or a bookseller, uh, Edmund Curl by Paul Baines and Pat Rogers. Um, but again, it's got a, it's got bumps at the top corners. 
So they're not quite new books. It's Clarendon Press, Oxford, um, 2007. And Curl was a early uh, 18th century uh, bookseller who pirated everything. Um, he just stole stuff uh, willy-nilly. Uh, and he, he, he published a ton of pornography as well. And he was... He was charged for libel. I don't know that much about him. I just, you know, little bits and pieces in other books that I've read. So it's interesting to have a whole uh, book by him, especially a newer one. Um, oh, I just uh, go back to this one here. Uh, as I said, it was, it's University of Toronto Press. Um, I didn't say who the author was, in case anybody's interested. Um, is there a title page? Think of the, okay, uh, Gene Barman, University of Toronto Press, um, 2002. See, some of these are now no longer available. There's there, there's a few. There's quite a few that are no longer available. And this is definitely still sealed. And it's Tennyson's poem, "New Textual Parallels" by R. H. Winnick. Um, just that I, I I literally know nothing about it. Um, the publisher I wasn't sure, but again, the almost well giveaway price because this is all sent by um, Prime as well, so there was no uh, charge for shipping. Open Book Publishers, 2019. Some of these were very expensive. It looks, it's got a lot of uh, notes and everything. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, it says, in Tennyson's poems, New Textual Parallels, R.H. Winnick identifies more than a thousand previous unknown instances in which Tennyson's uh, phrases of two or three to as many as several words are similar or identical to those in prior works by other hands. Discoveries aided by the proliferation of digitized text and related doc, uh, development of powerful search tools over the three decades since the most recent major edition of Tennyson's poems was published. Each of these instances may be deemed an illusion uh, meant to be uh, recognized as such and pointing for uh, definable purposes to a particular antecedent text, an echo, uh, conscious or not, deliberate or not, meant to be noticed or not, meaningful or not, or merely accidental. Uh, yeah, and I sort of read that, and I thought, why not? Because uh, I do like Tennyson. This one definitely was this one. Like I, I, well, I should have just looked up the price that I paid. Like this is like it's, it's still tight. Uh, it's Scottish fencing, five eighteenth-century texts on the use of the small sword, broadsword, uh, spadroon, cavalry sword, and Highland battlefield tactics, presented by Maestro Jared Kirby. Introductions and historical essays by Maestro Paul McDonald and Ben Miller. It's uh, New York Hudson Society Press, uh, 1918, uh, 1918, 2018. Yeah, uh, it's fairly nicely done. It's not a very poor um, facsimile or anything like that. Noisy today. It's quite nice out. Ah, uh, but it is it is a, a print on demand book. This has been done by Lightning Source. Uh, but it's still quite nice. It's cloth as well. Yep. This one is definitely a used book. Uh, this was another one that was probably twenty five p or something like that. Uh, you can see the the spine is sunned. Uh, it's got a lot of wear on it. 
it's just it's called Scientific London. Uh, it's Frank Cass and Company, 1968. So it's an old older book. Bernard H. Becker. It's basically, uh, yeah, it originally came out in 1874, and it's basically a reprint of that. And it's just uh, going through all the scientific societies of London: the Royal Society, Royal Institution, Society of Arts. The Institution of Civil Engineering, the Chemical Society, Department of Science and Art, London Institution, uh, Burbeck Institute, the Gresham Lectures, the Society of Telegraph Engineers, the Museum of Practical Geology, British Association for the Advancement of Science, and the Statistical Survey, and the Royal Geographical Society. And I'm always up for something um, to... That, that looks pretty good for my London um, section, even though it's a general thing. But as I say, I couldn't pass it up for, you know, less than 30p. Uh, here was one that was kind of expensive, originally. Uh, Nathan Mayer Rothschild in the Creation of a Dynasty. The Critical Years, 1806-1860 by Herbert H. Uh, Kaplan. And it's, it's, you can see it's dinged at the bottom, so it's not a new end the top, so they're not brand new copies. And you can, there's sticker, um, um, residue on it. So this def, see this tells me it's been, it's been in a bookshop somewhere. Uh, it's 2006 Stanford, uh, University Press. Uh, it's short. Um, it's 150 pages. Plus about 30 pages of uh, bibliography and notes. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it says. This groundbreaking history explains how Nathan Mayer Rothschild rose from comparatively humble circumstances to become the founder of an extraordinary banking and financial empire. An empire that remained... Uh, preeminent in Europe for more than a century. The book focuses on the critical years of Great Britain's war against Napoleon, when Rothschild became, in effect, Britain's banker and paymaster on the continent, contributing to Wellington's defeat of Napoleon and con uh, consolidating, consolidating the basis of the Rothschild financial dynasty. Uh, not something I would normally be interested in, but that that description, um, you know, uh, made it sound interesting. So, uh, at the very least, for the few pennies that I pay for it, I can pass it on to someone. Here's something that I thought was going to be a little better, actually, than it is. Sherlock Holmes as a pipe smoker. A complete analysis of all pipe smoking references related to Sherlock Holmes and the canon and its original illustrations by Thomas Gwynier. And it's a it's a print on demand book I think as well. Yeah. Uh printed it says printed in the USA IG ICG testing. Um it's I don't know if it's a self published yeah, it's probably a self published thing. Uh two thousand fifteen. Uh MX publishing, yeah, so it's a self publishing. Uh, it's not, the photos aren't very well uh, reproduced, but it could be a, a fun little read going through, uh, you know, it's not, it's not anything substantial, but again, the cost was almost nil. This I already have, but the copy I have, uh, I got it, and it's, it's water damage, so when I saw this for pittance, I thought I'd get it again. Um, just a nicer copy, or I was hoping for it to be a nicer copy. Uh, this one does look in pretty good shape. I don't notice any damage on this one. It's about the only one, but it was remaindered as well, so that could be why. Um, it's the un An Uncommon Reader, A Life of Edward Garnett, uh, mentor and editor of Literary Genius, Helen Smith, Fire Strauss, and Giroux, uh, 2017. And, yeah, I think I believe I showed that uh, with my uh, books about books in the reader section about reading. 
but this one, yeah, this is a lot nicer because the other one was uh, quite, quite damaged. Now this one, bloody hell, I, I don't even think it's, I don't think it's, it's listed anymore. It is over 800 pages. It's a new companion to the literature of Wales. University of Wales Press, 1998, compiled and edited by Mike Meek, Mike Meek Stevens. That's probably a proper way to pronounce that, but I don't know. Um, and I am assuming there might be a newer edition of this. It's basically a dictionary. See, I wasn't a war then it was a dictionary I thought it would be I was I was expecting it to be like the Cambridge uh, histories of literature because they do I think have a Wales one uh, but this is fine as well it's a dictionary um, yeah it's just a, it's a basically a dictionary and as I said so there's two more that are potentially coming uh, but they say they're delayed. They're two uh, Orwell items. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just flabbergasted. Most of these, there's a couple here that I I probably shouldn't have bought. But as I say, uh, like this this cost me at this moment uh, probably less than eight pounds. Uh, what I've what I've just showed you here. So you can't even buy a paperback book for that. Even if there's a couple duds in there. Uh, that I don't really um, want, in, in essence, and when I'm done, I can pass them on to someone, and the, the cost is nil, nil to me. Or I might even be able to sell it to a bookshop, who knows. Um, it's, yeah, but anyway, um, I'll be back later uh, with, a, uh, with an essay, and hope everybody's doing well and getting lots of reading done this weekend. Take care. Bye.